Hey everybody, welcome to another fly tying episode from HolesingersFlyShop.com. I'm Sean Holsinger and today I'm going to tie an amp pattern again. Um, this was one that I've been fishing lately. I just had some clients out and um, the water was muddy. When it was muddy we were dry dropper fishing and we were dry dropper. Our dropper fly was a big mop fly because it was muddy. I wanted something I could see. We moved upstream. The water had cleared up. It got nice and clear. And um, the mop fly was too big, that just wasn't what they were after, they wanted something small, so I dropped down to one of these ants, and it worked great. We started picking up fish right away, we caught, you know, a fair amount of fish, and ants this time of year, they're in the stream, they're getting knocked out of trees and different things like that, so it's a staple of the trout's diet, and it's something you should have in your box. Um, a couple weeks ago, Pat from the podcast um, sent sent me a picture he said he's been fishing this it was a george daniels pattern uh perda ant i think he calls it and i just kind of glanced at it didn't really pay attention look up the pattern but i glanced at it saw what it was about and um at the time i was busy tying other stuff and didn't think about it but i remembered what it was when i come back to it and you know was starting to get ready to fish the ants fourth of july is typically my beetle with an ant under it Time of, time of year that's what I switched to and uh, so I needed to get some ants ready so I sit down and uh, without looking George Daniels pattern up I just sit down and tied what I wanted to tie how I wanted to fish it and it worked out great for me um, it's really easy to tie just two or three materials and you're good to go a lot of it you probably already have so anyways guys enough of me talking here you're gonna see my version of this we're gonna call it the heavy-headed ant because that's what it is. It's a tungsten bead made to get you down. Um, you can fish it as a point fly or under your dropper, which is the way I prefer to fish it a lot this year. And um, give it a try, guys. Here it is in the vise and then the material list to tie it. All right, here you see the hard-headed ant in the vise, and uh, let's get into tying it here for a hook. I'm using one of our Wholesingers Fly Shop jig hooks in a size 18, and the bead I'm using is a fire hole slotted bead, and it's a three millimeter black thread. We're just going to use some 140 black, and I'm just going to wrap that right in behind the head there. Lock that head into place. Then we're going to take some super fine black dry fly dubbing and uh, get it out of the bag here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a very, very small piece. And we're going to dub this on. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a, a taper right here behind this bead and lock it in place and then I'm actually going to come in a little bit with thread to cover it make a little bit nicer taper and then we're going to go back to the bend of the hook okay now back here I'm going to take some more dubbing and I'm going to build up a bigger ball with it back here and this is going to be the the rear end of the fly or whatever and we're just going to make a nice tight dubbing noodle here that on there nice and tight. I like the super fine for this because I can build a nice smooth body with it. And then I'm just going to make a nice ball of dubbing here. And I want it to be very close to equal with the, uh, with the bead. I'll make a wrap or two in front and behind just to lock it into place there. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some legs on this. Now, I came ahead of time and cut a whole bunch of strands of this flex floss about a half inch long. And because um, I, when I tie, I tie a whole bunch at one time. And I'm just going to set it on the side. You can see there, I just set it on the side, made a wrap around it, locked it in place. Now I'm going to put on the other side, do the exact same thing. 
So I'll just get them close to the length I want them. Hold it on the side. Make a loose wrap. And then a tight wrap. Okay, now you see this one here is just a little bit shorter. So before I tighten it down, I'm just going to come in with my fingers. Whoops. Pull it out. Try to even it out there. I got it about the same length for both of them. And then I'm just going to come in here in the middle. Those will splay out when they hit the... Uh, you see how they'll hit the body and they'll splay out at the body and the head. So that's good. I like that a lot. And we're just going to whip finish. And it's actually going to be a three segmented body. Now, ants have six legs. This has four. Trout can't count. So we're good to go. And there you can see I got a nice profile. A nice ant profile to this fly. And it catches a lot of fish for me this time of year. Alright guys, I hope you like that simple ant pattern. Like I said, it's going to get down quick. Those legs aren't going to impede it that much because they kind of hang tight to the body usually. And um, it's going to sink. It, I, I did notice that whenever I was fishing at the dry dropper when I cast it out there. It would shoot right to the bottom, which is where I want it to be. Well, right, you know, it, the three O bead, I can float it under a caddis well without pulling my caddis under. I fish a little bit bigger caddis, well, a little bit more hair, just to make it more buoyant, make sure it floats. But um, this time of year, this is one of my go-to flies. This uh, black fly larva or white zebra midge for, for the black fly larva, that's what I fish a lot in my local stream and do quite well. This one works great, you know, get out and fish it, have fun tying it, and uh, experiment and have fun, guys. Like always, guys, if you need the materials, I have a description list down there with links to everything on our website. You can find it there. And uh, until next week when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.